Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade and welcome to another Coding Fundamentals and GML tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about graphs. As always, a data structure is a collection of data, the relationships between that data, and how you interact with that data. KMaker has a bunch of built-in data structures, but you may often need to make your own, which is something that you can do. And in this tutorial, we'll be talking about how to make a graph. A graph, generally, is a collection of vertices, which can also be called nodes or points, and edges or links. Nodes can have attributes and so can edges. Edges can be one-way or two-way, weighted, etc. And graphs form the basis for a lot of things. So a simple diagram of a graph would be some nodes. Here we have A, B, C, D, E. These are nodes or vertices. And then we have our edges, the connections. So you'll see that A is connected to C and B. C is connected to all four. D is only connected to C and E is only connected to C. So our graph is going to be a collection of nodes with both one and two way edges. So edges that will go only one direction and edges that will go both between both nodes. Uh, we're only going to use strings or the only data is going to be strings. And the only functionality we're going to allow beyond create and destroy is the ability to add nodes and edges and then move between those nodes and edges. We're also going to build it out of DS maps. It's actually going to be a map of maps where the graph itself is a map and each node is also a map. So let's switch over to GameMaker Studio. Okay, so here we have our graph object. Let's go through the events. In our create event, we're going to create a graph, set the starting position, add some nodes, and then add some edges. And we'll come back to this in a moment. In our cleanup, we're destroying our graph. Since we are building the graph out of data structures, we need to clean up our data structures when we're done. Then we have the four key press events, left, right, up, and down, which are all very similar. They just move between nodes, we give it a graph, and we give it the direction. So these are each identical except for the direction. And then finally, we have event user zero, which you can see each of these key press events calls. And what this does is it just goes through our node display object, and it updates its index to show whether or not it is the selected node. So essentially, whenever we push a key, we're then gonna go through and update the nodes. So let's see what this looks like before we run the debugger. Okay, so here we have our nodes. You can see we have one node selected. We can go through our nodes and we can move between them. We're not drawing the edges, but in the create event, we've connected all of these nodes with various edges and we'll go through that in just a moment. I just wanted to demonstrate before we do that, how this works. Additionally, if we push spacebar, it tells us that that node has been activated. And here we can see a little bit of the usefulness of our custom data structure already. You could use this to make an interactive menu system or a level select screen, or really anything where you have a group of nodes that you wanna move through with a keyboard or controller. So before we actually go through the code of how the graph works, let's go through the code that sets up the graph. And we do all of that in our create event. So we have our function graph create, where we create a graph. Then we add our nodes. So we add start, options, credit, quit, and debug to our graph. And then we add edges. So this is a function and we'll walk through it, but it takes uh, the graph, then it takes the starting node, the direction, and the ending node, and then whether you want it to be bi-directional or whether you want the connection to go both ways. So we've added some nodes and then we add some edges. We add our edges that go both ways and then we add some edges that only go one way down here and then we allow it to loop on the sides as well so I'm just going to bring this back up so here we go this set right here allows us to go like this see we're looping down this set right here allows us to go around like this and then this set right here lets us go from these middle three over to here or uh, from these middle three over to here so again, I want to stress that this is the power that creating your own data structure allows you to have. With just a few lines of code, once this is implemented, we can create a complex system. And it would be very easy to just add in new nodes. In fact, we'll demonstrate that when we're done. But we could just add in new nodes to this, reconnect them, and so on. In fact, if we wanted, we could set it up so that you know it goes through and it figures all this out programmatically, rather than just setting it up or hard coding it in our event. Okay, but now let's actually walk through the code. 
since we want to recreate this code from scratch, I'm actually going to delete this entire folder. Now we'll remove everything, but don't worry. Uh, it's all backed up in GitHub. And in fact, I can just drag them over here. So don't think I'm doing this from memory. I have it on my other monitor. So let's add this group back in. And now let's create these functions. So our first function, come up here, graph scripts. In fact, actually, let's do it like this. So if you don't know, uh, one of the things that I find useful, at least if you have a large enough monitor, is to have two columns of code. Let's open this column over here. The first function we need to create is graph create. So let's rename it to graph create. Doesn't take any arguments, doesn't have any parameters, therefore, say creates our graph. Okay. And now this is just a wrapper script for a DS map. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste the code over. Simple enough. So we're simply going to return DS map create. So return the value. So return the index created by the function DS map create, and we'll pass it over here to my graph. Now, one thing you'll note, and this is something that I like to do, is I have a comment up here, sort of explains how the graph works. In fact, I should actually do this a little bit better since we're using maps. So our graph is going to be a map. That's what these symbols mean. And it's going to contain vertexes or nodes. Again, let's actually just, since we're calling them nodes, let's call them nodes here. I do this just so I have a visual representation of what my data structure is going to be um, when I'm looking at it later on. So here we go. So that we've got our first script created. Next, let's create our graph destroy. Create script, graph destroy. Now this we do need to pass in an argument. This is going to destroy the graph. All right, second script created. Now we have the big one, graph node add. One of the big ones at any rate. So I'm not really doing this from memory. I'm doing it mostly from memory. But we're gonna take two arguments. The first one is a graph, which is the DS map. Second one is gonna be a string. We're not actually gonna enforce this. We just wanna know that for the purpose of this, we're supposed to be passing in a string. That's the type of data we want our graph to take. All right, and again, I wanna create a representation of our node so that I remember. It is also going to be a map, and we'll talk more about that in a moment, but it's going to have the following values. left, right, up, down. And now we're simply going to initialize these values. And for this, is again, it's simple enough that I'm simply going to copy over the code. So, and again, let's just make our naming consistent. New node. Okay, so we create a new node. This node is also going to be a map. Then we're going to create or initialize these four values, left, right, up, and down, to undefined. This is technically unnecessary as a DS map will return undefined by default, but I think it's a little bit easier to visualize if we initialize them to undefined. Uh, you'll see what I mean when, I, when we run this through in the debugger. And then we're going to add this new node to our existing graph where the data is the key to that node. And one very important point here is that we are using DS map add map. And the reason this is important is because we have to clean up our data structures. At some point, I'll do a tutorial on JSON. Uh, if you want to know more about it, there are already some for GameMaker out there on YouTube, which you can look for. But 
What DS Map Add Map does is it adds a map to a map, as you might guess, but more importantly, it tells GameMaker that you're doing that. And the reason this is important is because then when you destroy the main map, as we're doing with Graph Destroy, we're passing in the graph, it knows to also destroy all the existing maps that are inside of it. So if we add a map as a map, when we destroy the main map, all of the internal maps are destroyed as well. And this is very useful for creating this type of data structure because it means we can build it off of maps and not have to worry too much. We still have to worry about it and we have to take it into account, but not have to worry too much about cleaning up our data structures when we're done. So we have two more scripts. Graph, node, add, edge. Just gonna copy this over. Add. Okay, and so here we have one of our most complicated scripts. Because it's complicated, I'm gonna do something that I like to do, which is I'm gonna rename the arguments. Okay, and we've got graph, And you'll see why I'm using uh, these specific names in a moment. But here we go. Sorry, I'm not quite good enough to talk and type at the same time here. too many. All right, so there we go. We've renamed our arguments. And what this allows us to do is now reference these arguments by name. I do want to initialize two more local variables. So what are we doing in the script? We've got our graph, and then we've got node A, the direction, node B, and then whether we want it to be bi-directional. Essentially, we're saying A is going to connect to B. Do we also want B to connect to A? So the first thing we have to do is actually get the maps or the nodes, which are maps, that are stored in the graph because, again, we're giving it node A, but that's just the key or the data. So we can get the maps very easily. We go like this. Okay, so we're looking at our map, which is our graph, and we're giving it node A name, which is that first node that we're looking for, and that's gonna return the actual map. And then we wanna do this again, but for node B. So now we have the two maps. To set the first direction, it's actually very easy. We can just do DS map replace, and now we need to replace the value in map A, which is the direction, and we need to give it the key or the value of map B. So you can see an example of this over here. We've got the map for start, which again, or the node, we're taking the direction, which is down, and we're gonna save this value options there. And I'm just gonna copy this next part over because now this is where bi-directional comes in. So this saves direction number one. If it's bi-directional, then based upon the map, we wanna go in and add that value to the map. Okay, so this is everything but movement. Let's actually run through this portion in the debugger. Because if you're not already familiar, this is probably fairly complicated. But I think when we step through it in the debugger, it'll be pretty obvious how it's working. Sorry, we got an error here because I haven't created a script yet. So let's just create this script so there won't be an error. All right, so now there won't be an error. Let's run it. Okay, so it's running. Let's actually walk through this. So this first script, graph create, simply calls DS map create, returns the index. So now this value is a map. You can view it as a map. 
There we go, currently empty. We're saving the data start to the variable position. We'll use that later. So now we're gonna add some nodes. We come in here. So here's our node script. We're going to create a new map. And let's actually view this as a map so we can watch it as we create it. Here we go. And then we're gonna add these values in. So now we've got up, left, right, down, all set to undefined. And we're gonna say DS map add map. We do it. And now you can see that this node has been added. The other great thing about DS map add map is that if GameMaker knows that it's a map in the debugger, you can actually view it. So we've got our main map, which is our graph. And then we've got our first node, which is start. And now I'm actually just gonna skip over these codes. So you'll see the options, credits, and debug. So here we go. We have our graph and we have one, two, three, four, five nodes, all five nodes. You can see they've all been initialized. They've all got their directions as undefined. So now let's add an edge. So we come in here. So we're renaming our arguments. And again, this is just so it's easier to use. So what's the first thing that's gonna happen? We're gonna get this value. So from our graph, which is right here, we're gonna get node A name. So start, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna get this map. So you can see the index for this map is three. Node A map, node A map is three. Node B map is four, which we can come over here and see is options. And indeed start, and options, those were the two values, the node A and node B. Now we're gonna replace the key value pair in the start node. So our start node, currently, we're gonna do this for down. So currently down in our start node, the key value pair is down and undefined. So we want to replace the value here, undefined, with options. Go through, it's been replaced. Because bidirectional is true, we also want to look up our options value up and replace this with start. So we go see, it's not left, not right, up. There we go. Down, the opposite of down is up. We're gonna replace that value, start. And now our start node for down has options and our options node for up has start. So we've added this edge. We can do this for all of these. Now I wanna step through one where it's false. So again, we go through, get our two nodes. So what are our two nodes here? Options and quit. We wanna go left. So we've got options, left. So this is gonna replace that value with quit. It's gonna replace undefined with quit. There we go. Left is now quit, but bidirectional is false. We don't actually want quit to go right to options because quit already goes right to start. So that'll just skip and it'll be done. And we can go through this. And now we've got our nodes. So let's come over here, look at our graph, view as a DS map. Here we go, here's each node. We can come down to start. We can see that it's connected to four different nodes. So let's see, start connected to options, options connected to credits going down, credit going down is connected to start. So we have that loop and we can look at all of these and see how each node is connected. Now we can't move between them yet because we haven't written that script, but let's go write that now. So we have our final script here and this one is very straightforward. So I'm just gonna copy it over. So again, we're renaming our arguments up here and all we're doing in this script is we're saying whatever our position is and remember that we initialize position to start. We're saying, go find that value in the graph. That's our current node. Then our next position is our current node direction. And then if that direction is not undefined, in other words, if it's a valid direction, we're going to set that position, set position to next position. And after doing this, we call event user zero and all event user zero does is it loops through every node. And if its name is the same as the position, then we set its index to one. Otherwise we set it to zero. So let's walk through this once in code. So we hit it, we've got our graph. We've set those up. So let's see, view as a map. So here's our graph, we're going down. So 
what is our current position? Our current position is start. So we get a new node. We should see that current node, we view it as a DS map. Here we go, three, three. So this is our start node. Now we want to know what is the connection? What's the position at down? That should be options. So we go through, next position indeed is options. And now, since that's not undefined, we simply set next position to be options, or sorry, we set position to be next position. We come over here into event user zero, which every node just has a variable called my name. And so it's gonna loop through every single one. And when it finds this node, if these two values match, if my name equals other dot position, image index is going to be one, otherwise it's zero. So I'm just using a simple sprite here where zero is white and one is pink. Let me actually unset this breakpoint. See, where is it? There we go. Now we can simply move through and we have recreated all of our code. I do want to take a look at the node object here just briefly. It really has one key, which is space. All it does is if you push spacebar, the node checks and see whether its image index is one. If it is equal to one, that means it's the selected one. Uh, and it simply says, show message, my name, which again is a variable that we set, is activated. So now let's say we wanted to add a new node. We can come over here. Let's just add it to the bottom. We're gonna say that this variable, and here you can see I'm using object variables. Actually, let's just leave it at default. So this variable is gonna be default. So you want to add a new node. Its name is going to be default. And then let's just say, so credits is going to go to default. And default is going to go to start. And then we want to connect it down here as well. So default will go to quit and default will go to debug. And we don't want it to be bi-directional. The only one we want to be bi-directional is the start. Now, if we rerun this, so we can rerun it, and here we go, our new node is connected. And if we were to push spacebar, default is activated. So in summary, a graph is a collection of vertices or nodes and points and edges, which can also be called links or lines. You can make your own. Uh, you generally will build them on top of another data structure. We used maps or maps of maps, but you could use maps of lists. Uh, lists of maps, you could use arrays, uh, and they're very useful for many different things. We created a simple one that just allowed us to add nodes and edges and then move between those nodes and edges so we could have a menu system that uses the keyboard. But you really could use them for so much more than that. Which brings us to our additional resources. I would highly recommend reading some of the graph data structures uh, on Wikipedia so you can get a better idea of the types of graphs that are out there and how they're used in the real world. The links will be below as will links to the slides and the source code. And that's it. Thanks for watching.